Head over to miniaturemarket.com where they have thousands of board games at discounted prices like Vintage. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going back to the 50s and 60s and 70s and collecting different things like old lights and robots and chairs and bikes and all sorts of different things. Today we're taking a look at a set collection card game designed by Bruno Fiduti called Vintage. Let me show you how it plays and I'll see you on the other side. Vintage is a set collection card game for three to six players where each player is going to have their display case in front of them with face-up cards that aren't quite hoarded yet and they might get stolen from other players. Here's a closer look at the beautiful art in this game. What you're doing is on your turn you'll take one of the cards in front of you in your display case and you'll take it and put it in your hand or you can place it face down into your hoard. Those cards in your hand can never be stolen anymore and these are ones you're going to be doing set collection with. Then you'll either take one card that's face up in front of any other player or from the discard pile, and you'll add it to your own display case, but that can be stolen from somebody else. Then you'll draw two cards from the top. You'll decide to keep one to place into your display case, and you'll place the other one on top of the discard pile. That's how you do it. Everyone just continues doing this until this deck runs out, or with five or six players, once the deck runs out, you'll shuffle the discard pile and keep going that way. And at the end of the game, you're going to give these different category cards to players whoever has the most of certain things. For example, whoever has most cards in the 50s. Everyone's going to look at their cards. They're going to see if it's in the 50s or 60s or 70s. Count the most. Whoever gets it will get this, which is five points. You'll do the same for 60s and 70s. These are the only bonus cards that are sort of different in points. You're also going to look at each of the item types. For example, robots. Who has the most robots? You'd look at the cards here, and whoever has the robot symbols, you'll count up however has the much. Whoever has the most will get that specific thing. You'll do that for all of the different item types. You'll also do it for each of the color types, but there's also icons uh, for colorblind friendliness. You're also going to score points for each of the card's core values, which are actually on the cards themselves. So you'll add up all your card values, plus all the bonus point cards you got, and whoever has the most at the end is the winner. And if there's ever a tie for any of these, whoever has the oldest card from that set will win the tiebreaker be able to get that card. Now there's 63 item cards in the game, but here's a look at 10 more of them. Again, the art, and they just look really cool and nostalgic. All right, there is vintage, great art and look. Even just a look at the box, the way they did the colors, the fonts, everything, it just, it captures what it was trying to capture with this game, that nostalgic feel for sure. It's just beautiful to look at all these things and kind of joke about, hey, you remember these things? Remember these phones? You remember those things? You know, not that I was, a, you know, I was there during the 70s. I was born in the 70s and in, in the late 70s. But even some of those older things you, you remember seeing around or seeing things about them. So I like that. This is a good casual set collection game. One of those games that you're trying to figure out what to get. You're watching what other players are doing. Uh, more about when the types of groups that this is good about later. But it is, a, you know, a good, uh, you know, a, it, it's a good way of playing a casual set collection game. Now, this game has some thinkiness that sort of sets in about halfway through once you start collecting things. At first you're like, well, what am I gonna go for? I don't know. Right, maybe I'll take the ones with the most points. Maybe I wanna focus on a strategy right from the beginning. Uh, but it, so as the game picks up steam, it becomes more and more thinky as to, ooh, what should I get? Should I get this? I've already got three of these. Do I need to get another one? I don't know. They've taken two maybe, I don't know. Do I wanna stay in the lead? Are they watching what I'm taking? Am I watching what they're taking? Um, and so, you know, the thinkiness really sets through about halfway through the game. And you really, if you want to play this well, you you kind of have to pay attention to what others are taking. And so if you want, you can play this game pretty seriously and be, really pay attention to what they're taking. And and again, it, it, the game has a little bit more depth than you would think this would. It, I mean, you're, you're just simply like taking a card from in front of you, stealing something from somebody else, and putting another card in front of you. That's pretty much it. And so there's a lot of different things that's going on here, and you've got to pay attention to that. And you're trying to have enough to win each as many categories as possible, but you don't want too much, right? You don't want to be like robots. Who has the most robots? And you're like six, and someone's like zero. One, you know, uh, not that those numbers are realistic, but like that's, you don't want that. You want to be able to win like just barely because then you know you're kind of like being the most efficient as possible. And so that's a fun aspect of this. This game really gave me a feeling of another sort of filler game that is one of the best filler games ever, and that's Biblios. In Biblios, you're doing through some auctions and stuff, but you're also like taking cards, but other players can see what you're taking. 
and you're giving cards to other players and the way you're indirectly doing that here and you you're trying to win certain things and have the most of certain suits there's only like uh, i think there's four of them in that or maybe six and you're trying to win certain things but you're trying to have just enough and this game gave me that feeling of biblios without it being as heavy. And not that Biblius is a heavy game, but it's pretty thinky for a filler. This gave me feelings of that and a much lighter con uh, you know, uh, concept. So it's, it's one of those games where it's like, hey, if you kind of want to play Biblios, but it's towards the end of the night and you're a little bit tired, you can play this and it gives you a sense of Biblios, but without being as heavy, you can just play it when you're tired or at the beginning of the night or something like that. Revealing sets at the end is definitely exciting because you're trying to figure out who has the most and lots of like, oh man, I thought I had the most of this. You, wow. I, I thought you saw you were getting them towards the end. I didn't think you had enough as, as much as me. Uh, so there's some fun with the revealing there. Uh, and the best thing about this game really is I think that it can totally be played as a beer and pretzels type game where it's very casual. You're talking, you're chattering, you're collecting things that look cool. You are maybe trying to collect sets, but you're maybe not paying as much attention to what other players are doing, maybe just barely, but you're, it's more about socializing and talking. And you can play this game in that environment and still enjoy the game, or you could play it in a very serious thinky game where you're just watching what other players are taking, you're making mental notes, you're trying to remember what people took. So I like that, that you can sort of play this in two different facets. Um, on the negative side of things, if you want to play this competitively, it is a bit of a memory element. So you're trying to remember what other players took. You can't remember everything, what everyone's doing, but maybe you remember a couple of key things of what you're going for and you're watching those. Some people don't want, like even just the memory aspect of that. But like I just mentioned, if you don't want to play it that seriously, it's not that big of a deal. Also, it might not be for those that don't like to be stolen from or have your plans messed with because you are going to be stealing from other players. I don't think it's a big deal because you're stealing from them. They're stealing from you. You might just steal back what they stole from you. It might be this funny thing where you're going back and forth. So this game's not going to be for everybody, but if you like the art, you like the theme, and you're looking for a quick 20-minute filler game that can be played very casually or kind of thinky, I think you should check out Vintage. Thank you.